was searching for peace in some void I was trying to blame all my ears in this world I Relationships use me till I was done here. And all the time, someone was waiting to free me from sin. Greetings to you, all our viewers and listeners. Once again, welcome to our program, The Hot Grill with Tim Zunde. We keep on praying that you find this program and reaching to you, your friends, and all your families. Once again, your host today, my name is Walter Busangabanye, and uh, with me to help me in today's program in hosting, this program is Pastor Anyway Kanimba. Pastor Anyway, do you wish to greet all our viewers? Thank you. Greetings, dear friends. 
Thank you very much, our pastor. Today, once more, we are blessed and honored to have as our guest, Pastor Musoshi. Do you wish to greet our, our viewers, uh, Pastor? Greetings and uh, the Lord's blessing as we interact together. Uh, thank you very much. Today, we are honored to have uh, Pastor Joel Musoshi, uh, also Professor Joel Musoshi. Uh, Professor Joel Musoshi holds a PhD in the New Testament from Andrews University. Amongst his many other accolades and responsibilities, he is a former Vice Chancellor of Solusi University in Zimbabwe. So indeed, it is our pleasure and our honor to have him as our guest today. But before we delve into the subject matter, uh, for today, let me ask Pastor Kanimba to give us an opening word of prayer. Let us pray to our gracious Heavenly Father. We want to thank you this morning for giving us a wonderful privilege of sitting at your feet, studying your word. We come before your holy throne, seeking mercy and divine guidance. May you be with us, guide Prof. Mshoshi, Pastor Busa and I, as we are entering into a, 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 a well-defined uh, discourse. After all, we pray that your, your cross be uplifted. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you very much. Our discussion today centers on God and the existence of sin. Yeah. We want to interrogate mm. and understand uh, from the Bible yeah. that where is sin coming from? Mm. If God is holy, yeah. if God is perfect, if God is good, mm. where is a sinning, sin coming from? So, to begin our discussion, Pastor Kanimba, do you want to uh, fire the first uh, question to Professor Mshoshi? Yes, thank you, Pastor Busa. First question, Doc, uh, Prof, uh, how valid is the assertion that God is holy, is perfect and without sin, and is always right? Are there any biblical text that can support? And number two, do you agree that God is holy and perfect? If so, prove. Okay, uh, I would like to begin by indicating that uh, when we are dealing with God, there is nothing to prove. <laughs> the creatures cannot prove anything about their creator. <laughs> but we accept what God says to us <laughs> by faith. Okay. Having said that, God has given us evidences on which to base our faith. Mm. And the scriptures are full of some of those evidences. For example, God himself tells us about who he is. He describes himself. And over in uh, the book of uh, Leviticus, uh, he tells us, Leviticus chapter 11, he tells us, verses 44 and 45, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. So God defines himself to us as holy. So mm. there is nothing we know about God until he tells us. Mm. So he himself tells us that he is holy. In verse 45, he says, For I am the Lord who brings you out of the land of Egypt mm. to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. So there's an emphasis that God makes in introducing himself to his children. He says, I am holy. Mm, okay. He insists on that. Yeah. So when God tells us that he is holy, we have no other conclusion to come to than to accept what he says, yeah. if we are persons of faith. Mm. I want us to note that the angels that live in the presence of God mm. also describe him to us. Mm -hmm. They affirm that God is holy. <laughs> so this isn't just God talking about himself and claiming to be holy, but the angels that ever live in his presence tell us that he is holy. For example, in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, it says, Above it stood the seraphim, each one with six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, with two he flew. And one cried to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So the angels that live in his presence, mm. without being asked to say so, 
say that we see God as being holy. holy yeah. That's how they describe him. Mm. And the saints of old who have walked with God have also sensed that mm. he is holy. For example, the psalmist in Psalm 99 verse 9 tells us, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Mm. So God mm. is holy. Yeah. We find that testimony throughout scripture. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. That lays a perfect foundation for our discussion. God himself tells us that he is holy. Mm -hmm. The angels profess that he is holy. The saints of old also tell us that God is holy. Mm. Perfect foundation for our discussion. Now, here is the problem, Prof. God is holy, as the scripture has told us. But then we have a problem. Evil erupts mm. in heaven mm -hmm. where a holy God, God. dwells. Yeah. Mm. Sin erupts in heaven mm. right in the face of God. Mm. Now, let me take you to Revelation 12 verse 7. Mm. The Bible then says, and there was war in heaven. Yeah. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and his angels, they, they fought back. Now, this is war. This is sin erupting in heaven. How do we explain this? How does it happen that before a holy God, something as evil as rebellion erupts right before him? Yeah. That is a very important question. It is... Um, it's a troubling question mm. that has troubled people through the ages. Mm. You know, when you look at um, sin, sin is described in the Bible in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, for example, as a mystery. It is described as the mystery of iniquity mm. or the mystery of lawlessness. The fact that it's described as a mystery suggests that it is something that is beyond our ability to understand. A mystery is something that you look at but you can't put all the pieces together to make sense of them. Mm. It is beyond you. So mm. sin is beyond us. A being who was created in God's mm. image, created perfect, decided not to respond in love to God. Mm. Mm. He chose to respond otherwise. Mm. God was showing and showering his love but this being decided to act differently. Yeah. And the wrong choice of this particular being results in sin. It's an intelligent being who decides to disobey. Love took a risk in creating beings that had the capacity to think like God, the capacity to choose like God, the capacity to choose right or wrong. When God made creatures who were like that, he took an eternal risk. And somebody took advantage of that risk mm. and used it for the wrong thing. So we find we have the problem of sin. We cannot explain it. But it arose right in the presence of God, precisely because God granted his creatures the power of choice. Oh, okay, Prof. But I have a question. Mm -hmm. If God is omnipotent, is all-powerful, is all-knowing, can we not blame God for the genesis or for the origin of sin right in front of his presence? Can we not blame God for the origin of sin? That's a very interesting question. I want us to begin by remembering the smallness of our human minds. <laughs> Just so we, we know yeah. who we are. Mm. We are small <laughs> human beings with small minds. Mm. These small minds have been further degraded mm. by sin mm. so that our ability to reason and to think and to perceive mm. have been degraded in the process. So because we are degraded by sin as fallen human beings, we do not have the capacity to rightly appropriate mm. blame. For such thing mm. big mm -hmm. as sin. We don't have the, the capacity to be able to do that. We lack the capacity to evaluate things of 
such magnitude mm -hmm. as sin. So James, for example, tells us in uh, James chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, he says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Mm. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Mm. And so then it goes on to tell us that when we follow up these desires, mm. they then result in sin. And when we follow up sin, it results in death. But I want us to note that God himself mm. cannot be tempted by evil. Mm. God himself cannot use evil to tempt another person. Mm. So if he cannot be tempted by evil and he himself cannot tempt, we therefore cannot say that sin arose from God. Mm. We cannot give him the blame for sin. That would be to say, you are the one who caused it. Mm. But God tells us in his word, he cannot be tempted by evil, neither does he use evil to tempt anyone. Okay, Prof. Mm -hmm. we, we need to dwell there a little bit more. Okay. Mm. I appreciate, yes, perhaps we cannot directly blame God for the origins of sin. Mm. But could it be, could it be yeah. that when Lucifer was created, uh, he was not exactly perfect? But then Ezekiel 28, uh, mm -hmm. uh, verse 18 through 14, let me read this one. You have been in Eden, the mm. garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Mm. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of your tablets and of your pipes were prepared in you in the day that you were created. You are the anointed cherub yeah. who covers, and I have set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. You have walked up and down in the midst of stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in you. This, Prof, you, you, you need to, 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 to explain it to us again. Lucifer was perfect, Tim. but then iniquity is found in him. Mm -hmm. How does he even fathom the idea of rebellion mm. if he was perfect, created in such a majestic way and seated at such a high position, the covering cherub, and then from nowhere, yeah. in his mind, the seed of rebellion just sprouts. Surely, how how, how does this exactly happen, uh, Prof? Yeah, you're asking how, as if it's something that we can see and quantify. <laughs> this is a mystery. <laughs> Because it is a mystery, it is something that uh, God understands how it happened, mm. but we don't. Mm. What we do understand is that this creature, Lucifer, was created perfect. Mm. I want you to note when you go to Isaiah, we'll come back to this mm -hmm. Ezekiel passage, mm -hmm. but when you go to Isaiah chapter 14, mm. and you look at verse 12, I want you to notice it begins by saying, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, mm. the son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Mm. I want you to note that it's not asking questions. It is not saying, how are you fallen down? Mm. It mm. is saying, how you are fallen down? Mm. That is an exclamation rather than a question. Okay. Mm. The exclamation suggests that this is something that's deep and profound. We don't understand how it happened. So the biblical writer is saying, we can't, we, we can't fathom how it happened. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you are fallen. You have fallen. Mm -hmm. how, how it happened. Mm -hmm. So it's marveling at what happened. So it's put in the form of, of an exclamation. How you are fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to this uh, the Ezekiel passage, mm -hmm. we find that um, mm -hmm. he is described as having been perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in that perfection, he decided to focus on himself rather than on God. Mm. So sin in Lucifer resulted from self-seeking. Okay. So okay. he decided, when you look at what it says, he is saying, 
I will put my throne above the throne of God. I will mount above the heights. So he is talking about himself. I will do this. I will do this. So this turning of attention on himself rather than on God. That's somewhere in that act. That's where the mystery of sin arises. God's intelligent creation mm. is intended to be looking at God, to be focusing on God, to be giving glory to God. The angels are always saying uh, in, in heaven, hallelujah, hallelujah. They are bringing praise and glory to God. So we as intelligent cre creatures that belong to God, made in God's image, are supposed to be adoring him, mm. looking at him, praising him. But when we turn attention to ourselves, away from him, we are now in the realm of where the problem started. Now exactly okay. how the matchstick was kindled, mm. that we don't know. Okay. That's the mystery but, part. But in self-seeking, mm. in focusing attention on himself, rather than on his maker, something happened. Okay. And so he began to, to think about ideas that were alien to the atmosphere of heaven. He began to wish he was sitting on a throne higher than that of God. Mm. That's alien. Okay. So to, let's get this right before we move from Lucifer. Mm. So, yes, uh, Lucifer was perfect because God could not have created an imperfect being. Mm. Okay, that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the rebellion, the sin found in Lucifer arises from his self-centered uh, behavior, so mm. to speak. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, self-seeking. It, it, self-seeking, yeah. Mm. So it has nothing to do with God having created an imperfect being in no, Lucifer. It, it has everything to do with God having accorded liberties okay. to his creation. That included the power of choice. I have a follow-up question. Okay. Yeah, okay, Doc. I, I have a follow-up question on that, on Lucifer. Was it not uh, most noble and necessary for God to deal with sin at its infant stage, well, number one, and number two, to deal with the perpetrator of sin only without uh, letting uh, the, the, the unfolding of sin uh, going on and on? Was it affecting it? future generations? Yes. In fact, the Revelation 12, yes. God himself then casts mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. Lucifer, the devil, the dragon mm -hmm. on planet Earth, mm -hmm. he could have just dealt with him, destroyed him mm -hmm. right there, and we would not be having the problems we now have today. Human beings are suffering today because this issue was not dealt with right at his inception. So mm -hmm. why couldn't God just deal with him there and there? Yes, we asked the question, why couldn't God do that? He could. Okay. He could have done that. That's an option that was available to God. Mm -hmm. But God has to choose the better option yeah. from his point of view. Yeah. He could have simply squashed certain and he could simply have started all anew mm. with, with, with a totally new um, uh, creature by another name. Mm. But there were other angels who had witnessed mm. and God needs to deal with this thing in ways that deal not only with the perpetrator, mm. but he has to also make sense to those that are looking at him. Okay. He has created a whole universe of intelligent beings mm. who are witnessing what, have ha what has happened. They can understand it. There are claims that, the, that Lucifer is making that uh, cast aspersion on God mm. himself. Mm. That look at God as being less than perfect, less than fair, less than just. So God has the choice, do I squash this one and be done with him? But how about the questions that arise in the minds of those others? Mm. I wanted to, to mention the fact that um, there is a principle of solidarity. Mm. The solidarity of the human family. Mm. God um, created Adam and Eve in such a way mm. that... Um, Adam would produce after his kind. Yeah. Okay. So we inherit that which we find in Adam. So when Lucifer sinned, that would not have affected our world unless the father of the human race accepted it. Mm. If the father accepted it, then it begins to affect everyone 
who is in solidarity with this father, mm. I mean, with uh, this father of the human race. Mm. So, so when we look at the problem of sin, we are looking at something that um, that has a ripple effect. Mm. Lucifer becomes the devil right in the presence of God, and God decides to take a long-term view to let sin, the experiment of sin, reveal itself. <laughs> Part of that hmm. is to chase the devil away from his presence because he can no longer live in the presence of a holy God. Hmm. Now, when it says he was cast to the earth, it probably means much more than being thrown to the earth. He is cast out, and having been cast out, the earth is one of the places that he lands on. Mm. But he probably must have gone to other unfallen worlds. Mm. Mm. And our world is the place where he found a welcome. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Interesting, you, you then just even uh, bring the discussion now to the case of Adam and Eve. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, when we say he probably found um, an avenue or uh, he was welcome on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. They are our parents mm -hmm. and they decide also mm -hmm. uh, to rebel against mm -hmm. God by yes. eating of the forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. They were also uh, created perfect. In mm -hmm. fact, Genesis tells us when uh, God had uh, completed the act of creation, mm -hmm. he says everything was good. Mm. But again, we find Adam and Eve are falling in exactly the same place mm -hmm. as Lucifer. Mm -hmm. So what's going on here? This, this is why the question continues to roll. Where, where is this really coming from? Mm. We having the same kind of thing being repeated, beginning with uh, one of the angels now, it's coming to the human race. What's going on? Where is really this sin problem coming from? Yeah. Yes. I think when we look at it uh, from the perspective of uh, Lucifer becoming the devil, mm -hmm. rebellion arising in a heart that was once perfect, mm -hmm. we kind of see the pattern that is repeated in Eden. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect environment. Uh, we, we, as it were, witness its creation. And we hear God saying, perfect, 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 very good, very good, very good. Mm. And human beings are part of that which is pronounced very good. Mm. So they are in a perfect environment. Mm. But within that environment, they are faced with a choice. God presents them the opportunity for choice. Mm. He tells them, you may eat of all the trees in the garden, but this one you shall not. Mm. Why does God do that? Well, God is... Um, helping them to exercise a choice. Love without choice is not love. Mm. It is compulsion. Yes. It's slavery of some kind. Mm. If love cannot choose, then it is not love. So yeah. God allows them to make choices. If they worship him, it's because they choose to worship him. If they obey him, mm. it's because they choose to obey him. So in that setting of a perfect environment, there comes Lucifer, uh, impersonated by the serpent. Mm. And he brings a temptation to Eve. And Eve is fascinated. She doesn't, on the surface, mm. realize where she is getting into. That's part of the mystery of sin. Yeah, sure. So even when Lucifer himself sinned, he probably didn't realize at the beginning where this was leading. <laughs> but he followed on, and it resulted in his fall. So the same thing happens with Eve, and then um, Adam follows along when he's given the fruit also by his wife. So it's a perfect environment. They are not hungry, mm -hmm. but they have the power of choice. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. mind, this fascinated mind, leads them into sin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the intelligence that God has given us will lead us into sin. Mm -hmm. we, we think beyond or in directions we shouldn't be thinking about, and it leads us into error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so. Now we see human uh, suffering. Mm -hmm. Human being, the human race is suffering. Yes. We're talking of diseases, mm -hmm. COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. We're talking of talking of wars. Mm, Go yeah. to Ukraine right now. Yes. Mm. People are suffering. Uh, 
death itself, mm -hmm. the worst enemy that we have, yes. mm -hmm. all because Adam and Eve sinned. Mm. Again, the question comes, surely this holy, perfect God, mm. the God of love, mm -hmm. should have just dealt with Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. dealt with the sin problem right there before it proliferates to all of us. Mm. And now all of us are suffering because of this a problem. Mm -hmm. Prof, we need you to answer this question immediately after the break because mm -hmm. this, this becomes critical. Now we have this problem now on the human race mm -hmm. and we are all suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we need you to now tackle this bit of the question immediately after the short break because we need to think deep. God really could have done something so that we are not in the mess mm -hmm. that the whole universe mm -hmm. finds itself in. Okay. Viewers, thank you very much. You can see this discussion is now really heating up. We need to understand God and the existence of sin. Why did things happen the way they did? We're going to take a short break. Don't go far away. We'll be back soon. God bless you. Welcome back uh, to all of you, our viewers. Uh, you are joining us on Hot Grill with Tim Zunde and uh, we have a discussion topic on God and mm. the existence of sin. And we, our guest today is Professor Joe Musashi. We have just posed a question uh, on you, uh, Professor, on uh, how God dealt with uh, Adam and Eve. He seems to uh, just let the sin problem uh, proliferate mm. and today we are saying we are suffering because God did not deal with this issue right at his inception. What would be your response to this? I think uh, it's important for us to note that um, the same way that God dealt with Lucifer mm. allowing freedom, he has allowed the same freedom to Adam and to Eve so that they make their intelligent and free unhindered choices. One of the questions that arises um, is why if Adam and Eve made their choices and mm. their wrong choices, why do we suffer on account of that? Sure, yes. yeah. I think we want to deal with the principle of the solidarity of the human race. Mm. When we talk about solidarity, we are saying that we are not individually disconnected pieces that exist mm. floating around. Okay. You occupying your space, I occupying my space, mm. and you your space. We are saying that there is an interconnectedness that is there. Not only the connectedness that we see in our families where you are connected with your parents and your siblings, but we are talking about um, a connectedness that originates with Adam and Eve. Mm. We derive from Adam and Eve, um, the, uh, we derive life itself, the chain of life that is carried on to us. So we have not been created individually. We are a continuation of the chain of life from Adam and Eve. We carry within us some of their DNA. Okay. So we are their children. We therefore carry some moral responsibilities or, or liabilities that, that we are found in them. We, we find those in us also. They've been mm. passed on to us. So when God created Adam and Eve, he created Adam and Eve not just as a singular person, but as the father of a human race. Mm. He's the beginning point. He's the headwaters of the okay. human race. Mm. As such, mm. he carries with him certain responsibilities that flow down to his children throughout all generations until time shall last. Mm. We mm. are made in the image of God because Adam was made in the image of God. Yeah. We experience the effects of the fall because Adam fell. Now, I want you to note that um, uh, Christ came to play a particular role of a new solidarity. <laughs> when Christ came, he was picking up to redeem the era of Adam. Hmm. He redeems that up by creating a new solidarity. Okay. When Christ becomes the new head of the <laughs> new humanity. <laughs> yeah. So when we understand the place that Christ <laughs> plays as uh, the head of that new solidarity, something that happens by choice, then we realize that God has not left us in a mess. He has provided an eternally grand solution. I want us to look, for example, 
that whereas Adam in Eden was called Adam, the first man, Christ is referred to as the second man. Mm. Adam. Second man. Mm. So I want you to note, for example, when we look at Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment mm. came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act and free gift, uh, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification mm. and life. Mm. For by for by um, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners or constituted sinners. Mm. So also by one man's obedience, many will be constituted righteous. Mm. So I want you to notice mm. there is a parallel equation here. Mm. On the one hand, we have Adam and his solidarity. Mm. Through his poor choice, we share in his liabilities. Mm-hmm. We this suffer solidarity. That's yeah. right, mm. because of that solidarity. Yeah. So we are his children. We inherited it. We share in it. Mm. But God provides Christ Jesus as the new Adam. And when he provides Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus acts in ways that we have never acted. Mm. Perfectly obedient to his father. He lives a holy life. And that life is now being imputed to us. Yeah. And we can share in his um, righteous life. Now somebody would say, "Why? what entitles you to that? What have you done to contribute to it? Mm. Because nothing but God's grace makes it possible for us. I want you to note that also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 45, as it is written, mm. the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. I want you to mm-hmm. notice it's using first Adam, mm. last Adam. Adam. Yeah. These two solidarities mm. that are side by side. One is described as a living being the other one is a life giving spirit yeah so abraham adam is able to let passively to pass on to us passively mm-hmm. okay. his liabilities okay but christ not just passively passes on his righteousness he actively <laughs> shares his righteousness with us <laughs> he goes to those who are outside of it to pick them up and to bring them into his righteousness so, so that's that's a much more wonderful um, kind of solidarity. Yes. God has equalized the situation. Mm. Yes, there was a terrible loss, but there's but. also <laughs> a tremendous gain through Calvary. Wow. Thank you, bro, for the principle of solidarity. But even though I have a question, in, in, in this modern world, there are theological issues that are coming, such as process theology, that God is now evolving to learn the, 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 the height of sin. He can't control now the height of sin, and God is evolving, learning as well. And there's issue of days in that God created the world and is now an absent landlord. has just left the world and re- deserted the world. Is God still able to solve the rule of sin, the issue of sin we are seeing in this world, the trauma of sin, murders, rape cases, uh, suicides, wars, diseases, is God able, does God still have power to rule and to end the issue of sin? Okay. I want to begin by saying that um, when we try to answer these great questions of life (laughs) without this book, (laughs) we are... leading into all kinds of treacherous grounds. (laughs) So you find all kinds of theologies that are raised by people who are trying to develop a theology (laughs) without the Bible. But when we go back to the biblical text, Mm -hmm. we're going to find that we have answers that are satisfactory for our needs. The question that we are raising is a question that is right at the center of the great controversy. Mm. Um, The controversy between Christ and Satan. Mm. Uh, Satan has made certain allegations and accusations against God, mm. claiming that God is unfair, he's unjust, his law is, is unsustainable, that it is uh, an unfair and arbitrary kind of law. Mm. And God is made to, to look like the devil. Mm. <laughs> Satan yes. paints God like himself. Mm. And he paints himself 
like God. Mm. So he wants people to think that he, Satan, is the good guy. Yes. Who is here to help us mm. by certain shortcuts in life and this mm. and that. Mm. And God, the one who is the substance of our existence, is the bad guy. That's what mm. he tries to do. So he has made these claims, but God needed to vindicate his character. Mm. God doesn't use force to vindicate his character. Okay. He decides that he is going to allow the unveiling of sin and its principle. It needs to be opened and to be seen by those who have to deal with it and make choices. Mm. So when that is done, when, when God allows sin to unveil, it means that it rolls out into the communities. It means it runs down my street. Mm. It means it gets into my house and I get sick and mm. I die and things like that. Mm. Families are devastated. Yeah, That's part of the grand experiment of the devil mm. that God has allowed to run its course mm. so that he doesn't quickly stop it, giving it a chance to rise again because mm. its central issues have never been answered, mm. never been addressed. So God, because of his eternal love mm. decides to take the longer um, solution mm. the more expensive mm. solution mm. it is expensive mm. for us human beings yeah because, because we get to suffer yeah, yeah. but yes. it is much more expensive for god mm. because his son has to die yes. when he has done nothing wrong mm. so he took the more expensive but more effective route mm. so that sin will not rise again so because of the nature of sin, it needed to be addressed fundamentally. But when you go to the book of Revelation, mm. you're asking the question, can God deal with this problem? Is yeah. it ever going to come mm. to an end? Mm. You go to Revelation chapter 21, beginning at verse 1, it says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, mm. for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, mm. and there was no more sea. Okay. So there's a new heaven, there's a new earth. Mm. God is involved in a new act of creation. Now, that word which is translated new mm. does not mean simply new in the sense that uh, we are seeing it just for the first time today, yeah. but it means something of a different order. Wow. So yeah. God is creating a world of a different order. What makes it different? Well, part of the fact is that he says, I saw the throne of God coming down mm. into this creation mm. and the tabernacle of God is with men. Mm. The presence of God physically among his people. Mm. That's something that is new. It is new after Eden. Mm. We've never had that kind of experience where God actually dwells in our midst. We've had symbols of God, mm. but not God himself sure. actually coming to tabernacle. Yes. And then he tells us, <laughs> so he tells us in verse 3, and behold, a loud voice said, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and so forth and so on. Then it tells us in verse 4, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, mm. no sorrow, no mm. crying, no more pain, because the former things have passed away. So the question is, is God going to bring an end to this problem? Yes, yes indeed. Yeah. The last book of the Bible says mm. so loud and clear mm. that God will deal with sin once and for all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's look at another a view of this subject. We are saying the human race is suffering uh, because of sin. But when you look around the world, there are certain regions, places, where they seem to be much suffering, more suffering than other places. I'll give, it, I'll give examples, for example. Places like Iraq, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. we know that there's always war one year after the other. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's look at COVID-19, for example, Italy, yeah. was one place which was hit by COVID more than maybe ma many other regions. Look at poverty. Mm. It's synonymous with um, Africa, for example, mm -hmm. Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. Could it be these regions are more sinful mm. than other places of the world because suffering is a consequence and a result of sin? So where we see other places, other nations, other people, other regions are suffering more than others. Look at even uh, things like um, uh, um, uh, earthquakes. Mm -hmm. There are regions where they are more predominant than others. Could it be there are places, there are people who are more sinful than others? Okay, um, hmm. we, we understand that sin is not a substance 
that you go around spreading, carry it somewhere and um, drop it somewhere, sin occurs in the human heart. Mm. Okay. That's where it occurs. That's where it is incubated. That's where it multiplies. Mm. If the if the human heart, if the incubation place is favorable, mm. then it, it it multiplies. It generates itself more. Um, we cannot say that there are certain people groups that are inherently mm. more mm. sinful than others. Okay. And I underline that word inherently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. It's not like it's built into their nature to mm. be more sinful. Okay. For all have sinned and mm. fall short of the glory of God, yeah. says Romans 3 verse 23. Mm. So everywhere you go, we all have sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. However, certain communities have allowed the growth of specific sinful practices to become ingrained <laughs> among them as they are passed on from one generation to another yes. and each generation seems to polish them for example we know countries where the drug trafficking mm. has become a real issue and they they have become suppliers of the rest of the world like mexico so they, yes they are mm. they are known to be centers where they they, they manufacture and spread this thing around mm. they spread this thing around okay so that kind of place is going to suffer the consequences of the prevalence of drugs in society because the people have decided this is going to be their trade. Yeah. They want to make their living out of this. So the consequences will be there. Um, so those sinful practices are sort of ingrained to become sort of like a culture yes. in a place. Yes. So we see that um, those areas will suffer certain consequences more. Okay. But yes. <laughs> there are other natural consequences of sin okay. that are not evenly distributed on the face of the world. Mm. The earthquakes, mm. the floodings, and, and other things, they, 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 they happen uh, in different places. But if you mm. actually look, we are going to find that the same areas that have terrible earthquakes are not the ones that have flooding. Mm. Mm -hmm. and they are not the same places that have terrible wildfires. Mm -hmm. So these problems seem to be scattered in all different places. How we respond to them, our ability to respond to them, is part of what makes certain areas much more depressed than others. So the Ish. consequences of sin that we see, some of them are self-inflicted. <laughs> the way we handle those sin problems, it becomes something that's a greater burden. Hmm? to our societies. Hey. Well, uh, I have a question as well. Um, I think sin is, it's impossible to overcome sin. Why do I say so? Adam and Eve were not born, but they were made. Mm -hmm. But they fell into sin. But us, we were not uh, we were not made, but we were born. So it me I think Adam and Eve were at a better position mm -hmm. than us. We are now in a degenerated state. Huh? It's, I think it's impossible to overcome sin if Adam and Eve were born, mm -hmm. but they fell into the trap of sin. I think it's wishful imagination. <laughs> it's just a fable to say sin can be overcome. Mm -hmm. I think that's a that's an interesting observation. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul addresses this question yeah. by talking about the superabundance of grace. <laughs> so you notice that in Romans chapter five, verses twenty and twenty-five, Paul says, "Moreover, the law um, entered that offence might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more." I want you to notice much more. Yeah. So sin abounded, so there was plenty of sin, but grace abounded much more. Mm. So on the scale of things, mm. there was a certain pile of sin and its consequences, mm. but there was a greater pile of grace that was provided yeah. to deal with it. So verse 21 says, So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. So God has brought this equation where sin was there and it was a problem, mm. but grace comes in a much more abundant way. But the question you are raising is, mm -hmm. if Adam were created, mm. made, mm. 
mm. from the hands of God yeah. and made perfect mm. and they failed. Mm. Yeah. What chance is there for me? Yeah. Sure. To fail. Mm. I want us to go back to the second man. <laughs> Let's go to the second man, mm. the second Adam, Jesus mm. Christ. Yeah. On the one hand, you have the first Adam, mm. no needs. He's, he has a full stomach. Yeah. He's provided with a whole array of variety <laughs> mm. and he chooses to sin. The second Adam comes along and he's in the wilderness. Yeah. Matthew mm. chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. He's in the wilderness of temptation. He's been fasting for 40 days, fasting and praying. <laughs> and in that period of fasting, as he comes to the end of this period, now he is feeling very hungry. Mm. Hasn't eaten anything for 40 days. Mm. And yet, in the midst of this dire situation, temptation comes. Mm. And it's a similar temptation to the one that threw Adam down. Mm. Appetite. Yeah. <laughs> but in this very desperate situation, the second Adam prevails. Mm. So is there a chance mm. that I can prevail when Adam failed? Not only is there a chance, it has been demonstrated mm. through Jesus Christ that victory is available to me. The whole exercise and demonstration of victory, mm. as we find it in Christ, is actually my victory. Mm. Okay. So do we have a chance? Mm. Praise God. Amen. Our chance has already been demonstrated in mm. Christ's victory. Mm. Okay. Prof, uh, we probably now to try need to try and wrap up this subject matter and bring it to rest. Uh, what exactly, therefore, should the viewers take home mm. from our discourse today? We are interrogating God and the existence of sin. So uh, we wish to ask you to put everything now together. Is God the one to blame mm. or for the sin problem? Uh, we were asking, does God find it a pleasure and a joy to see uh, man is suffering because of sin? Is there hope for victory? In fact, when I ask that question also, uh, if when we look in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, mm. all the men have sinned. True. Adam, uh, Abraham, everyone, uh, David, mm -hmm. the yeah. man after God's own mm. heart. Mm -hmm. uh, tra tra tracing through the Bible, all have actually sinned, just <laughs> as the Bible said. Mm -hmm. So wrap it up. I is there hope? when we discuss the subject matter of God and the existence of sin. sin. Okay. I want us to remember that God did not will sin. Mm -hmm. He did not create sin, as we said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Sin came as an alien element in God's pure universe. Mm -hmm. So it came as an alien element, something foreign to God. But the unfortunate emergency of sin mm -hmm has given opportunity for a greater demonstration of the love of God. Mm. We now have an understanding of grace that we would never have had mm. if sin had not come. Mm. So we understand mm. grace yeah. <laughs> as something that in the context of sin mm -hmm. goes to the undeserving. Mm. If Adam and Eve had not sinned, we could never have understood this characteristic of God, that's called grace. Hmm. How do you understand it? You've never done anything wrong. You don't need grace. So hmm. how do you understand that God has grace mm -hmm. when you never need it? Hmm. But when you have fallen into an unfortunate pit and God's grace lifts you up, you're going to see the brilliance of this wonderful attribute of God. Hmm. The, the depth of God's love is something that for eternal ages hmm. has been there. God has always been loved. But if you are in a place where there is nothing that suggests pain or hate, how are you going to really deeply appreciate love? <laughs> so mm. the backdrop of sin, mm. the dark backdrop of sin, mm. shines into sharp focus, God's love, God's grace, mm. God's redemption. We are able to worship him throughout all eternity, praising him and worshiping him, because of these attributes that have always been with him, mm. but that have now become highlighted by the presence of sin. Mm. And uh, when the problem of sin is totally resolved in the end, mm. we shall worship him eternally 
mm. um, celebrating his love and his grace mm. because of what he has done. So yes, there is a problem of sin, mm. but praise God, there is a greater solution. Mm. God provided a solution that's bigger than the problem that was being addressed. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Joe Mshoshi. Uh, to all our viewers, uh, we were interrogating this deep uh, subject matter, a mystery of, mm. of a discourse, um, how a sin originated. But thank God, uh, through this discussion, we now know that we will and we will now have a better and a deeper understanding of the grace of God. I know there's somebody uh, today who is listening, who has been following this program. Maybe you are suffering because of the consequence mm. of sin. We want to ask a uh, pastor to uh, pray for somebody today who was probably following uh, this program that we may even through the suffering we're going through also have a better understanding of the grace and the love of God. So if you are there who wishes uh, for this prayer, we are going to, at this point, bow down our heads for a moment of prayer and Pastor Amsoshi is going to pray for us. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a wonderful, wonderful privilege we have to worship a God like you. Mm. What a God mm. you are. A God who embraces sinners. We live in a world that has been marred by sin. Sure. Sin isn't a theory. Sin is something we feel in our lives, in our homes, in our bodies. We feel mm. the impact of sin. And yet, you have brought the solution of redemption, your wonderful redemption in Christ Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord, so that through suffering we may not miss out on the solution that you have. Mm. It would be a double tragedy to miss out on the pleasures and joys of this life because of sin, mm. and then to miss out on eternity because we didn't make the right decisions, we didn't turn to you in faith. Oh Lord, we pray that you may touch everyone who is within the sphere of our voices, who is suffering and who needs your help, to look to you and receive the grace and peace that you offer so abundantly. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Vachende vacha feke zwam Nguo chena kunyikayo Wokumbana na mpone si Jeku sazo Patsana Chazo kumbana, tose 
Tashikayo 